Hi, this is Andrea. Um, this is my next vlog in my porn series. In the previous uh, vlog and blog that I did on the porn series, I discussed the point of why women or men want to become porn stars from the perspective of them viewing themselves as sexual objects within a society where we've placed so much emphasis on the human as a picture as our appearance, as how our appearances make other people feel with regards to sexualized experiences. Now, the next point that I want to discuss today in relation to the porn series is basically if we look at women and men who become porn stars to get attention, to feel good about themselves, to feel wanted, desired, and if you were look back at how young people are raised already from a very young age to see themselves as beauty, as pretty. Um, young girls are taught to play with Barbie dolls who are the perfect little female form with the long blonde hair. Um, images that are specifically imprinted into the male and female brain that is connected to sexual stimulus. And young children are from a younger and younger ages associating with the sexualized symbols. So if Barbie and Paris Hilton and whoever in the media have been connected to the sexual energetic experience, then what young people want to do is they want to look more and more like those sexual images. So for example, I discussed also in the previous vlog that Miley Cyrus is being used by the movie industry, by the music industry, by the consumerist industry to stand as a sexualized symbol and within that she is getting what she wants to experience which is to be desired by millions and millions of people her ego is obviously expanding exponentially because within that she feels like a god and those who are making money from her are feeding her and making money off her own creative ideas that she's apparently doing this movement, this revolutionary movement of musical expression, but it's really just her flaunting her body parts to make money for those who are making money and for herself. So she is now more and more placing herself in roles where she has to be naked half the time. And this is increasingly programming younger people to associate themselves with those sexual symbols. Now, the point that I want to discuss today is the money point. A lot of people argue, oh, but you know, porn stars enjoy it. So then in the previous vlog and the previous blog that I did, I touched on the point of if you are raised in a society where you are told, listen, to get attention and to feel good about yourself, you have to present yourself to be a certain picture, act a certain way, behave a certain way around other people in society, around men, around women, and therefore you feel good about yourself. That's obviously you're going to have women that are going to grow up believing that a porn star is the ultimate way for them to be seen as almost this god or goddess. And now, that also has a lot to do with the upbringing of the person. You can look there at sexual abuse, what sort of sexual images they um, were introduced to at what age, uh, what was the media influences in that child's life, because here you're dealing a lot with the programmability of a young child. A young child is very programmable because they're like a sponge. They take in everything that their parents, their siblings, their peers, their friends, what they see is happening on the TV, they suck it in like a sponge and their self-definition becomes that which is shown to them by those that have an influence in their lives. So there are many aspects that one can look at for if you have the justification excuse of that the porn star enjoys it. Why would you enjoy placing the physical body into positions that are really not comfortable, that is really not practical for the physical, it is harmful, it is painful, there more often than not there's drugs involved to get the woman to be able to do that stuff, more often than not if you actually do your research of ex-porn stars that share their stories, they explain of the situations of rape, the situations where they, the immense pain that they went through, the situations where 
they were basically told by the director, if you don't do this, we'll get the next girl to do it. Um, all of that done for whatever reason, because the girl just wants to get it over and done with so she can be this role. Because I don't care what you say, but you if you look really inside the mind of a person who is enjoying double penetration, apparently, really actually go behind the scenes and look at what has to be done for that woman to before, during and after cope with and imagine herself into a situation where she's enjoying double penetration. Now the point for today is the money aspect. A lot of people will say the funny thing is that we people purchase porn and therefore there's this multi-billion dollar porn industry. Therefore obviously in an economy where, first of all, people have to not only work for their survival, but they have to now more and more to escape the life of living on the breadline, which is the majority of people in this world are living in basic income jobs, living on the breadline. So some of the discussions that I came across on why people from a financial perspective become porn stars the, the point that is raised by some is that, you know, if you are obviously existing in this 8 to 5 economy where people are working like slaves, what happens oftentimes is that women who become porn stars, what they enjoy about it is that you have, all you have to do is you have to, you know, let's say you're a stripper. Like, for example, the perspective of one person who worked as a stripper and became friends with thousands of girls who worked in the sex industry. You have to basically, as a stripper, flaunt your body for a few hours and you make good money. You work the hours that you want to, there's drugs, so there's that aspect of apparent enjoyment. Then there's the porn stars who put themselves through that excruciating pain or through that experience, which they, from my perspective, don't actually even understand if they were standing equal in one to their physical body, what it is that you're putting your body through, actually. And so for a lot of women they see, or men, they see the eight to five jobs as mundane, as look at the sheep going off to do their jobs. My job has flexible hours, I only have to do this and this, and then I make so much money. So it's seen as a more viable economic option. So again, Nobody is looking behind the scenes at what is going on with our economy that we are forcing ourselves and each other to work in job situations where your only way out is to become a porn star. And, you know, for example, here on the one on the Business Insider, I will provide the link. They have these top porn agencies. And according to the one spokesman of this agency, he said, um, there's a relatively straightforward scale for performance by an in-demand actress. $800 for a girl-on-girl -girl scene. $1,000 for a guy-girl scene. $1,002 or more for anal sex. $4,000 or more for double penetration. So this is what a girl is making per movie. And then there's the people buying the stuff, so there's all this money, and then you say to a person when they're young and they're entering the system, oh, you can work an 8 to 5 job earning minimum wages where for the rest of your life you're going to be working, you know, even some difficult physical intensive jobs. The boss gets to own his mansion in Hollywood and drive around in his Ferrari, but you're going to live in a little one-bedroom apartment for the rest of your life, you know, eating basic food and not having much of a life and you make it possible for people with a bit of physical distress and a bit of discomfort and some drug use, hey, become a porn star, become a sex worker. So these are the things that if you were to actually go behind the scenes, not what's being presented to you in front of your face, which looks good, looks like a bunch of men and women enjoying themselves. If you actually go and look at behind the scenes and you look at, if you were to walk the timeline of how this man or woman made the decision to become the porn star, is it because they enjoy that type of sex or is it for monetary purposes? We're basically looking at the same thing. We're looking at 
ourselves from the perspective of misusing the physical form, misusing sexuality. The actors and actresses are doing it for their reasons, which as you can see are not clear. It's not it's not self-supportive. It is not uh, representing a society that one can really be proud of, where one can really say, oh, okay, I enjoy sexual expression, I do it with my partner, we do it like this or this, he enjoys that, I enjoy that, cool, okay. This is being exploited and done in a way so that a multi-billion industry can make all its money. There is no, you know, innocent self-expression within it, and this is how an industry is fueling itself. I mean, the media is constantly showing us pictures of naked girls, women, men, the idealized pictures, and young people are growing up into that, believing that to be cool, and for me to feel cool because I perceive others think I'm cool, I'm going to do this and this and this. And the porn industry is just another step or a few steps away from the person perceiving that they can get what they want, whether it's personal self-value experiences or monetary issues. And either way, it is being brushed under the carpet because obviously this is a major income point for you know, people within the corporations, within the business world, and they're not going to, even your politicians are not going to do anything about it, nobody going to do anything about it, because if we don't address the underlying problem, which is our economy, which is our money system and how that is currently functioning and on the, on which principles our money system is based. If you don't go and relook the principles of capitalism, you're not, never going to remove this problem. And currently, nobody wants to remove the problem because I'll share this one website with you where they have statistics of how many people are actually addicted to pornography. I mean, it's ridiculous. And therefore, you're basically looking at half of the world, 60-70% of the world, not wanting to speak up because they are the ones, we as the people with the voice, are the ones that are addicted. Then the rest of the ones are the ones who run the industry. So obviously they're not going to speak up because they're making all the money. So you have a situation here where the addictions are dictating the words that are coming through, even if you post a video about pornography, the comments that come through, that's why I make it very clear that I'm not interested in comments, I don't approve abusive comments, only common sense discussions, effective discussions around the point, um, because the comments that are coming through that are abrasive and abusive and harmful is coming from the place of an addiction. The person themselves, this is how little the mind is really understood, the person themselves, they don't know that it is them as their possession within their addiction that is actually communicating. They're just having their addiction bring up thoughts and then they go and type it on YouTube. Fuck you, man. So that is the problem that if we don't, even in society, the people that even see the common sense are the ones that must communicate about it, talk about it. The ones that are, if you have a moment where you realize Oh, I actually see that I am contributing to this problem. I am the problem. And I can't blame the industries because the industries are just profiting off who I am. So we have free online courses. We have forums where we offer support courses where we specifically, these timelines that I'm talking about are how you got to be who you are and the energetic addictions that you tied into pictures and experiences and to free oneself from that so you can get back to a point of having effective sexual relationships with another person without having to be in your secret dark little room masturbating to pornography where you feel and this is another point we can bring you feel inadequate sexually this is where a lot of people justify the existence of porn they feel inadequate in relation to other people they don't know how to create effective relationships with other people and so they go oh well but, you know, I need to have a sexual release, so they watch pornography. So the more and more we don't build up and become effective people and sort out our own issues that we have up here in relation to ourselves and others, and we don't stop 
the porn star inside image that was created where a lot of people who write about their own sexual expression will say, well, from young age, which brings us back to the Miley Cyrus people that are not taking responsibility, from a young age, I grew up believing, watching porn images and going, oh, I must be able to do that. And obviously then you, you separate and disassociate yourself further and further from yourself as a physical being to be able to interact with others because in your mind you're just seeing these porn images and, and porn bodies and you're not that. And each one is doing that. So man and woman or woman, woman, man, man, whatever come together and they're like, eh, eh, yeah, bye. And they go and sit in their rooms and they masturbate to pornography. So that is the major aspect that we're looking at as self in relation to what is out there because what is out there is just making money off who people really are and instead of people turning inwards and going okay I watch pornography because there's something up with with regards to me in relation to myself and then who I am in relation to others you know and some people that I've worked with on the forums will also write the justification of I can't get a girlfriend or boyfriend, so I watch porn, which is what the porn industry is obviously loving about the whole thing. So if we sort out, first of all, this desire and need to be in a relationship, I have to be with another, that aspect, if we can also work with that, so that when you meet the right person, you meet the right person, but you're not going to go stark crazy if you're alone for a year. You know, and then if each one sorts out their own mind issues in relation to who they believe they are, low self-esteem, self-loathing, this, 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 and you sort out yourself so when you as self move through this world, you're actually quite effective. And then you meet another person that's quite effective within themselves, and then you have a relationship or an agreement. But now currently we have dysfunctional humans looking at porn images becoming more dysfunctional and then they can't be together. So that is my suggestion to everybody. Um, that's something that I've worked with myself as well, is to clear the porn star on the head, clear the images in the mind of who you think and believe you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to look like. Um, because that will be the starting point of actually stopping and preventing any porn industry, whether it's adult porn, child porn, any dysfunctional thing in society that we all look at and actually go at some stage, oh, that's, that's not cool. But we go, oh, wow, it's out there. And the government allows it, it's legal. No, it's not actually what's best for everybody. Thank you.